guys, it's Miss Lacey here. Today I want to read to you What If You Had Animal Hair by Sandra Markle, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. And I am reading this with permission from Scholastic. Thank you, Scholastic. What If You Had Animal Hair. What if one day when you woke up, the hair on your head wasn't yours? What if overnight a wild animal's hair grew in instead? Polar bear. If you had polar bear hair on your head, you could play outdoors in cold, wet weather and never need a hat. A polar bear has a double coat of hair to keep it warm. There's a woolly undercoat close to the bear's skin. Above that is a top coat made of six inch long, stiff, oil-coated hairs. A polar bear's hair looks as white as Arctic snow because the top coat hairs are hollow and clear. They reflect the light just like snow. Fact, each May or June, a polar bear sheds its hair and grows a whole new coat in less than a month. Reindeer. If you had reindeer hair, swimming would always be easy, even in the roughest of waters. A reindeer has a double coat too. It also has a lot of hair, as many as 5,000 outer hairs per square inch of skin. Each long, stiff outer hair has a hollow core. These hairs trap air. In addition to keeping the reindeer warm, its hair helps this heavy animal float in the water. So that's why it would help you float if you had reindeer hair. A reindeer's hollow hairs keep its body heat from escaping. In fact, if a reindeer lies on the ground, the snow under it doesn't melt. Insulating, huh? Muskox. If you had muskox hair, you could play outside day or night, in winter or summer, without worrying about frostbite, sunburn, or bug bites. A muskox has the longest hair of any wild animal. Some hairs are as long as two feet. Its shaggy coat hangs down to its hooves. This coat is also double thick and so tough it acts like a suit of armor. Fact, each spring a musk ox sheds its woolly undercoat as much as seven pounds of hair. Like they're showing this one looks like it's shedding its hair. I don't know if you can see that. Oryx. If you had scimitar horned oryx hair, you'd never need a comb or a brush. Even if you rolled on the ground, your hair would be too short to tangle or collect dirt. A scimitar horned oryx has hair that is just right for its African desert home. The oryx's pale covered coat reflects sunlight and keeps it from overheating. The hairs are also so short that any cool breezes easily reach its skin. Fact, oryx calves are born with solid yellow coats. They develop distinctive markings and pale white and red coats as they grow up. Lion. If you had a lion's mane, you'd stand out in a crowd. You'd look big and bold. A male lion has a mane, long thick hair on the back of its head, neck, and shoulders. When it comes to having a mane, size matters. Scientists learned that female lions, called lionesses, prefer males with big manes. That could be because the healthiest males usually have the largest manes. Fact, a lion's mane needs regular cleaning and grooming. Luckily, a group of lions called a pride will groom one another. These big cats have a built-in comb, their rough tongues. Zebra. If you had zebra hair, you wouldn't have to work at being one of a kind. Each zebra has a stripe pattern that is completely unique. <laughs> a zebra's hair grows in black and white stripes. These stripes help it stay safe. Whether standing still or running, zebras usually stick together in a herd. Seeing so many stripes confuses hunters, such as lions and hyenas. If you've ever seen a video of zebras moving, you can really see how it can be confusing trying to single one out. They, they definitely blend together. A zebra's hair shows if it's healthy or sick. The short hair on a healthy zebra's mane stands up straight, like this, it's a healthy zebra. 
a six zebra's mane flops over to the side. Three toed sloth. If you had three toed sloth hair, you'd never be alone. Because of the algae, your hair would be home to many different kinds of harmless insects. Oh my goodness, those are bugs, those are insects. <laughs> A three toed sloth's hair often looks green because little plants called algae grow all over it. So the sloth is green because algae is growing on him. Sloths live in damp rainforests and rarely move, making their bodies a good place for algae to live. However, having green hair isn't a bad thing. Green hair helps sloths blend into their homes in the treetops and hide from predators such as jaguars and harpy eagles. That's true, that green, the green um, algae would help them blend in with the trees, right? Three-toed sloths spend most of their lives upside down, so their hair grows differently than other hairy animals. When a three-toed sloth hangs upside down, its hair falls over its body. So even upside down, the sloth's hair keeps its skin dry when it rains. <laughs> Arctic fox. If you had Arctic fox hair, you'd never get tired of your hair color because it would change with the seasons. <laughs> An Arctic fox's hair is snow white in winter. Each hair is also fat helping make its coat thick and warm. As the days grow longer and heat up, an Arctic, Arctic fox sheds its wintertime hair and grows a new brown coat. Now each hair is skinny, helping make its coat thin and keeping the fox from overheating. Besides staying comfortable, changing its coat keeps an Arctic fox perfectly colored to sneak up on prey such as lemmings and voles. When getting ready for winter, Arctic foxes also grow long hair between their toes and on, their, on the soles of their feet. Their furry feet help them run on ice without slipping. Giant pangolin. If you had a giant pangolin scales, you wouldn't need to put on a helmet to ride your bike. I hope you guys put on a helmet to ride your bike. But if you were a pangolin, you wouldn't need to. A giant pangolin's body is covered with scales, which consist of the same substance as hair. Like hair, the scales are made of tough keratin and grow out of the skin. A giant pangolin's scales also start small and grow longer until at last they fall out. New scales grow in to replace the ones that are lost. The, black edge, the back edges of a giant pangolin's scale-like hairs are razor sharp. So if it's attacked, a giant pangolin just curls up tight to stay safe. This one curled up tight. Tight and sharp in a ball. Porcupine. There's our picture from the front cover. If you had a porcupine's quills, bullies would never bother you. Look at this bully running away. <laughs> that bully's been attacked. A porcupine has a normal coat, but it also has special hairs too, called quills. Quills are stiff, needle-like hairs. If attacked, barbs on the end of each quill poke into the enemy's skin. Then, even when they separate, the porcupine's quills stay stuck in the enemy. A porcupine's skin gives off a fatty substance that coats each quill. This fatty substance contains a germ-killing chemical. So if a porcupine accidentally pokes itself, it won't get an infection. Pretty smart. Star-nosed mole. If you had star-nosed mole hair, your hair would stay put whatever direction you comb it. <laughs> no hairspray needed. A star-nosed mole's hair, unlike most animal hair, can lie flat in any direction. Pushed forward, sideways, or straight back, its hair will never stick up. It will always lie flat against its body. So the star-nosed mole likes to dig in the earth. Can you imagine why having fur like that would help it to be a good earth digger? Why would, why would that kind of fur help it dig? This lets a star-nosed mole slip easily through its underground tunnels, whether it's going forward or backing up. A star-nosed mole has comb-like claws to spread oil through its hair. That makes its coat waterproof. That's important since it lives in damp tunnels. Wild animal hair could be cool for a while, but you don't use your hair to stay afloat or confuse predators. 
You don't need your hair to change with the seasons, be a helmet or lie flat in every direction. And you'll never defend yourself with your hair, no matter what. So if you could keep wild animal hair for more than a day, which kind would be right for you? Luckily, you don't have to choose. The hair that grows on top of your head may look wild from time to time, but it will always be people hair. It will be what you need to protect your head from heat, chills, and bumps, and make you look your best when it's clean and brushed. This is talking about how hair grows, um, how you have holes in your skin called hair follicles, and it has cells inside the follicles. They have cells, and they produce layer of layer after layer of new hair that are pushed out of the skin. So as long as the root is alive, the hair on your head will continue to grow at about five inches a year, about three feet maximum. Take care of your hair by keeping it, keeping it healthy. And it says the way to do that is to eat right. So a good diet will help you have good hair. All the different food groups. Clean your hair regularly. Wild animals spend a lot of time and effort caring for their hair. Many animals like cats lick their fur to wash and comb it. If you saw my cat climbing in the back of me while I was reading this book, she does that a lot. She's always clean, cleaning her fur and taking good care of it. The most important thing to remember is that hair is part of your body. As long as you take good care of yourself, your hair will stay healthy. I hope you enjoyed What If You Had Animal Hair.